This is Abnormal Entertainment. I know how to hold a grudge. I can send a bridge up in smoke. And I can't count the people I've let down. The hearts I broke. You ain't got to dig too deep. If you want to find some dirt on me But I'm learning who you've been Ain't who you gotta be It's gonna be an uphill climb Oh honey, I won't lie Hey everybody, this is Daniel Garza and welcome to another episode of Put It Together. Thank you for joining me. I want to thank my producer, Mr. Kevin Moyers for all his support and help Invite you guys to go to abnormalentertainment.com and listen to all the shows on the network. This week I have a special friend of mine, uh, Chad DePierre, uh, coming on to talk about, uh, his website, the work that he's doing, and some really cool information. Uh, this was a very special recording. We were in his house doing a live feed on Facebook while we were recording this episode. So, um, make sure to check out if you want to see us, uh, on screen, you can go and check us out on his webpage or at his Facebook page. Uh, go check out Chad Napier and you can follow the links to the video or listen to us here on the podcast. Uh, thanks for listening, guys. I'll uh, be back at the end just to say goodbye. Hey, everybody. Welcome. This is Daniel Garza and... Chad Napier. How you doing today? I'm doing well. Good. Today, guys, we're going to uh, continue with our shows, uh, well, with recordings and but I want to try something new this time if you don't mind we uh for those of you that don't know I also host a podcast called put it together right where I discuss with folks how they're putting their lives together how they put Mm -hmm. their businesses together projects together Mm -hmm. and one thing that you mentioned to me on a phone call was that folks sometimes get the idea that you are too business like correct that um Although this is a, an entrepreneurship for you, this is something your business. Um, there are these two personas. There's the uh, professional chat and personal chat. Correct. But what I've discovered along the years of interviewing folks mm-hmm. is that I'm looking at you too. Uh, <laughs> is that this is not just professional this kind of business is personal too right um right because you're not working for somebody you're working for yourself you're mm-hmm. you're putting your name out there you're putting your brand out there right so it 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 has to have a personal touch mm-hmm. so right. if you guys don't mind and if you don't mind mm-hmm. i'd like to go and and uh rediscover Kind of who who Chad is and and why this now Chad's been on my show uh, four times. This and something like that. I think you know. I I think a couple times have been just like random conversations, like random topics that doesn't have anything to do with with like really myself. Or right? sometimes we we've, we've done like almost like uh, what I want to say like little like discussion groups. Yes, yes. We are uh, on my show. We do panel shows. Where I get a couple of my friends together and we'll just throw out some topics. And right. So that's been a really cool way of seeing your personal side. Mm-hmm. And then I've had you on the show to talk about your books, and that's been the professional side. We're correct. So how about we do a little combo? Do today? like a combo? Yeah, like, yeah. Like, who's really Chad? Yeah, because <laughs> we're even like we were even more relaxed today. Mm. Uh, very casual. So let's just go in that line. Let's, okay. okay. So let's as a it. reminder to. Um, to your listeners and my, I mean, to your watchers and my mm-hmm. listeners, tell us a little bit about your your background, where you come from, your family. Uh. Wow, that's a loaded question. Um, I've, do, I've I mean, I've done a lot. I mean, my, my you know, I'm originally from Ohio, grew up in Versailles, Ohio. Um, if nobody knows where that is, you know, it's about forty five miles from Columbus. Okay. So, you know, kind of growing up, you you know, grew up just, uh, you know, a, a stereotypical middle class family. You now, we were kind of really had like a strong family unit. We hung out as a family together uh, yeah. m- most of the time, you know, really growing up. But I started like part of, part of, part of me, you know, I started kind of martial arts. I really got, that's what kind of got me going like in this industry. 
because you know I started in martial arts when I, when I was around nine, and from that point, you know, that's when. So let's talk about little Chad. Okay. Uh, well, I'm going. I'm going off in a long topic. <laughs> Daniel's like. No, no, no. Well, no, no. That's good. I mean, because uh, you started martial arts when you were nine. Okay. Was it right. your idea? Was it your parents' idea? I think. Well, going back, you know, it was really my idea because that was when I'm on to like date how old I really am when I say this, but it I. That was when the first Karate Kid came out, and oh, I can wow. remember when I went and saw the the Karate Kid, and wow. it was a you know, a little home theater like in my town. We could just walk to. It was, it was actually cool. Yeah. Um, they closed it down now. It's not operational anymore. They should open that back up. But um, but anyway, you know, when we went and saw the movie, you know, they were passing out you know free martial arts lessons ah. to kind of promote like local you know martial arts studios and stuff like that. So that's right. initially kind of what got me involved. You know, I went and saw the movie Karate Kid, and then they were passing at the movie. They were passing out free lessons. Then they kind of took off from so there. So thank you, Ralph Macchio. For, yeah, exactly. For, thank uh, you. And of course, I went to go see that movie because I, it was Daniel. And it was Daniel's oh, son. Daniel, yeah, Daniel, so Daniel, I, Daniel, so Daniel gotta, yeah. So ever since that movie, I've heard the Daniel's son thing. So uh, right. you probably hear it so much, you're like, oh. yeah, I, 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 I do the, <laughs> the kind of stand. Okay. So, so you get in, you do this because it's it's a novelty. The, mm. the karate is a novelty, but there is so much discipline that comes with it. Right. There's so much. Um, it, it's hard work. Mm. It's um, Attention, your attention span has to be focused. Right. When, how does how does young Chad have that? Was it natural? I don't, you know, I don't think, you know, like, I mean, being a nine doing martial arts, I don't think it's too much. It's like with any sport being that young. I mean, if you play football, soccer, or whatever, I think being that young, you know, it's just something you wanted to do, you wanted to try, and you just did it. Right. And, you know, I did it for... I think, I believe at that time, you know, I did it for a couple years until I was like, you know, 10 or 11 and then stopped a couple years and we moved, we moved to, from there we moved to, as a family, we moved to Tennessee. So I lived in Tennessee for a while. Okay. So, you know, I lived in Tennessee, I believe for like three years and while I lived in Tennessee, I never did, oh. no, never like trained or did, went to a class or anything. You no, know, while I learned, I always like goofed around and stuff like that as a kid. But, um, and what I'm trying to kind of get to is that for people who are trying to start their own business, for people right. who are trying... Are you asking me a business like, question? You're asking no, no. me like when I was nine years old yeah, doing, no, like, it, again, doing finding, finding the connection between it because mm -hmm. I think that, um, and I'll give you a little bit of my background, I, I was always very creative. I always had this imagination for putting my toys together, like my uh, Planet of the Ape dolls with my $6 million man and I would steal one of my sister's Barbies and, and I would create all these, uh, they had their own show going on. So what I believe is that for parents out there and mm. for folks who are thinking, hey, I'm an adult now and I don't know that I can start my own stuff. Okay. But if you look back on your track record from when you were a kid, right. You can see the patterns of where your life can go. Does that mm. make sense? No, it makes sense. Total sense. So that, that's what I'm trying to get to. Is like, because I've known you, for those of you that know, we met on a set for a, right, a, a commercial. Right, on a set for a commercial. And then yeah. uh, we were just goofing around and cracking up. We really right, had, right. We were background, so we really had no no investment in it whatsoever. Right, like, <laughs> yeah, it was like a lot, like... I don't even know how long ago it was. Yeah, give, us our, ago. give us our lunch, pay us our money, we're out of yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but then over the years that I've known you... Both personally and professionally, you have this dedication, mm -hmm. and I think that's a really cool combo that you have. And right. what I'm trying to show people is that if you look back in your life, if you look back to when you were a kid, you will discover things mm -hmm. about you that you probably forgot, right? And can make you very successful today. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? It makes total sense. It makes total sense. Um, and that's where I want to get. I want just people to know, like. What your track record was, who you okay. were as a kid. Okay. So, so, but you were almost, am I correct, almost in the Olympics? Or on yeah, now, now you're kind of fast-forwarding okay. from being nine. 
I'm still on this Planet of the Apes thing. Like, when you say you play with Planet of the Apes, it's like in the back of my mind. I can see you sitting there like... Yeah, no, I I, I would... The Planet of the Apes would kidnap Barbie, and then the Six Million Dollar Man would come and rescue her. Okay. Yeah, don't judge me. I just had to say that. I had to get it it out of my mind because it was, you know, it was... uh, Don't judge me. Yeah, you're like, please, please don't judge me. Please, please. But But, but anyway, but, but anyway, what you're... You know, lots of times what we have to do... I'll answer your question with the Olympics thing. Now, now, now you're kind of fast forwarding time. Not nine years, okay, nine years in, old anymore. Okay, we're for us then. Okay. So, you know, I started, I think I started back in martial arts when I was around, you know, 13-ish. So, you know, at 13, then that's when I started training, getting more serious about it. And at 13, I kind of, that's when I kind of, you know, I was kind of a weird kid a little bit because, you know, like once I kind of got involved with something, you know, that's, that's what I was really involved with. The martial arts kind of stemmed that, Right. That you know the you know be, like being healthy, nutrition, exercise, and stuff like that, and you know working out and lifting weights, and and um, so I started training professionally, kind of you know a couple years later after that. Then from there, you know, I trained, I competed regionally, I competed in the nationals, competed in the Pan Am Games for three years in a row. And then after, then I was getting ready to compete international. Then then at the same time, I was thinking, now this is kind of going up to college level. You know, I'm already in college at this point. And, you know, I was training for the Olympic team. But I, during that time, oh, you know, the only reason I didn't go on or, uh, to compete at the Olympics or try out for the Olympics is because I wanted to finish school. Because at that time, you know, I'm training, you know, kind of going to college. And you can do it at the same time. You just don't have no social life whatsoever. Right. So, you... you it's it's it, you can do it, but you know you, I'm also training you know, four to you know four six eight hours a day. Wow! So that's what people don't realize. You know you're really training. So you know because you can't one you can't be out of shape and you go and you have matches and stuff like that. And most of the time you have matches back to back, and especially when you're training Pan Am Games, or you're training international. Usually international is actually harder than the Olympics. Uh, you know, when you go to, you know, if you're like a world champion or something like that. So that's what people don't know. Usually the, the Olympics is a little bit easier. Oh, wow. Like on the cardiovascular. Usually when you, when, when you compete internationally or like world events like Pan Am, Pan Am Games, you, you, you can have matches like back to back. You know, you have a, you have one match that kind of exhausted you. Now you have to run over, run over here and do another match. So it, wow. you know, that's what kind of, Wow, that's... I mean, uh, the physical thing, but I think, you know, to kind of go back and answer your question on the dedication thing, I think that's what was kind of strong for me, you know, competing at that level. That's why lots of times when you have professional athletes, most professional athletes, after they retire, lots of times they go into some type of business or personal development or, you know, how-to or self-help because they, they had all the discipline you know, that takes major discipline to really, you know, stay focused and train and, and work for a period of time right. for many hours a day. Okay, well, let, let's talk about that because people, I'm not a parent, you're not a parent, but definitely there's a lot of talk on the news and um, people talk about sports in schools mm-hmm. and um, kids getting into sports too young or getting into sports that are too... Uh, dangerous or what's your what's your take on that what's your take on kids and sports <laughs> the kids and sports well you have to remember my background you know I, you know I'm a martial arts guy you know and you know in competition you know I wasn't now I'm not young at this point you know like when you start competing professionally you know I've, I've gotten stitches above my eye I broke my hand um, you know hyperextended my knees I thought I broke my toe once my toe was like purple wow um, so, you know, it comes with a territory, but like with kids though, you know, kids, I think sometimes, and I used to be a, so funny, you probably don't know this. My family knows this, that knows me, but you probably don't know it. But I used to like years ago when I was in, in college, I used to coach, um, like, uh, preschool. I used to coach like uh, soccer and t-ball. Really? So, like, you know, like there, I think there were like anywhere from four to six year olds. And the biggest thing, you know, at that age, you know, the kids just want to have fun. You know, right. They just want to have fun. They're doing it for fun. But lots of times, you know, sometimes it, 
close your ears. You don't want to hear this. But a lot of times, you know, sometimes it's the parents. Sometimes the parents go a little bit. The parents are really into it, and you know they're screaming, and and it's like yeah, they're four years old, five years old. Just let just let them have fun, let them enjoy it. Um, so that's kind of my my take on it. But like when you, but then when you get up to middle school, because we live in Los Angeles, so you know of course you you know you, you get to the schools and private schools and especially like football, right? You know they're worried about impact and and you know concussions and stuff like that. And you know it, I mean it, it's hard to say from an athlete standpoint because it's. It's one of those things where it comes with a territory. Um, most of these schools are very good now. They have so much technology out right. um, as far as you worry about injuries and stuff like that. Uh, but sometimes injuries, you know. So do do kids it just happen? Do kids that I, did I answer young, that? Go around yeah, your question. No, 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 that worked. But uh, do kids that young? Because you're talking about forty six years old that you work with. Do they know the word competition? Do they understand? <clears throat> That there's a winner and a loser. I don't. I, at that that age, I don't. I want to say no, but sometimes you know. Nowadays, when I pay attention to you know cartoons and stuff like that, they they, they bleed all that stuff into cartoons and you know competitions. And, you know who's popular, who's not. And you know, they watch all this stuff, and so yeah. I mean, they, they might have a little bit of an idea, but to them, they're just having fun. So, what's your take on particip- participation awards? Participation award? Yeah, just for showing up. Here's the medal. Or here's a, a ribbon. I, 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 I get it. I get why they're doing it. I mean, I get, you know, especially at a, at a young age. I mean, certainly when you get older, you know, it it kind of goes away. And, you know, there's a first, third, you know, there's a first, second, third place, right. stuff like that. But I think, you know, I think it's a good thing. I think it's a good thing being young. I think it's a good, everybody likes to get awards. And it, it shouldn't be such a, you know, a competitive a competitive mind frame. Right. Because now kind of what I know is when we talk about competition in the business, personal life, and stuff like this, is there's no teamwork in competition. Hmm. Okay. There really isn't. I mean, you know, when you go to businesses and look at businesses, these businesses that, that preach on competition and network marketing to always have these competitions, you know, between teams and businesses and stuff like that. But reality is there's no... There's no teamwork in competition because oh, wow. comp, what you know deep down what competition says competition kind of breeds lack. There's a, you know there's a lack of abundance. The abundant there's not abundance for everybody. That's really what competition says. Says I'm kind of going overboard no, here. No, no, a but that's bit. cool. But you know, but we, you know, we kind of need to get away from the competitive mind frame. Now, I know you're talking about sports, so you know, there's always a competition in sports. But, you know, when you kind of bleed that over to other things and uh, businesses and other walks of life, different areas of life, you know, w- when we still have that competitive mind frame, you know, that's really what holds us back because but, it's... And is it is it a learned or a nurtured? I mean, not uh, is it grown or nurt- nurtured or learned? Yeah, that's the difference, right? Either your parents teach you or you're already born with the competitive... I, I, I think it's... I, I think we're taught. I think I think we're taught because I mean when you look at me just I mean just observe I'm very good I mean <laughs> this is gonna sound psycho when I say this I'm very good at observing you know like when I do business consulting and stuff like that this is what makes me really good at coaching and mentoring and consulting okay. because when you go into a business you know I'm very good at observing I'm very good at you know just sitting back and watching and picking up things and and um, to answer your question, you know, I think it's a learned behavior. I think when you observe kids, they're, they're naturally just living their life. They're naturally just having friends and they're naturally just want to do stuff. And we're the ones kind of, you know, we're the ones, and I hate to say the parents, but we're the ones that kind of are kind of, I hate to say that we're like beating it out of them or forcing it out of them or, or, right. or correcting them. No, do it this way, do it this way. Because we're, we're always, we're always aligning them exactly how we think, exactly how we think we should live. And we pull the kids more away from kind of just their natural selves, their natural, I don't want to say their natural abilities, but just, you know, lots of, lots of times when you just observe kids, lot, lots of times, even with health. You now, health, I mean, this is a prime example. This, I, this, I eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner, you know, it's, it's crap. I mean, it it really is. The breakfast, lunch, and dinner, if you really do your history, was started by the food industry. 
had nothing huh. to do at all with American Dietetic Association, had nothing to do at all with dietitians, had nothing to do at all with that. You know, look at the food label, and not the food label, look at the food guy pyramid. I, they call it something different now. They keep right. on changing the name. But when you look at it, you know, they have all these food groups. Where was that started? It started from the food industry. So it, you know, everything is, is we're, con we're conditioned to live a certain way. Did I answer your question? My, I'm kind of going, no, 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 I, I think you're, going off in La La Land a no, little you're, bit. No, you're adding to it. I think, um, the guy, keep me on track here because I'm kind of, I lost my train because of thought. I'm sorry. I lost my train of thought. It's things that we learn. Um, it, cause, okay, here's, uh, here's my take. You're you're raised a certain way. You're you're born into your family. Right. They they have their um, culture. They have their traditions. And sorry, I keep the camera. Sorry, I interrupted. The, the camera is far away because we're doing like cross. We're doing right. like a cross thing right now. We're recording a podcast and filming live, so I can't see the comments. So always comment and stuff like that because we can all we're always respond to them later on. But the camera is so far away, we can't see. Yeah, unfortunately, and I have, we can't see the comments. I have my laptop. Up oh, you got it. So he's, yeah. So, he's not uh, even telling me. I'm things. a professional. Uh, um, right. <laughs> Uh, so if you are watching, uh, Daniel ask, can see it. I can't ask That's the questions, and I'll ask him. You know, you can ask questions and stuff. I'll like ask that. a question for you. But uh, uh, so I believe that, for instance, I my n older sister is nine years older than me. Mm. So there was no real sibling rivalry in our family. Right. Um, I didn't learn to be competitive until my nephew was born, who is four years younger than me. Okay. Because my oldest sister is 21 years older than me. Mm. So uh, I was a year old when she got married. Anyway, so when her child is born, I'm four years old. That's when I learned to be competitive. But okay. not because my family instilled it in me, but because I, my nature was, why is he getting all the attention mm. when I'm the baby? He's not the baby. I am. Right. Um, it reminds me of that dinosaur from uh, Dinosaur. But was it, was it really kind of not so much like a, you know, some, um, somebody was, lots of times it's a sly. Lots of times it's kind of what we see, our environment, what we kind of pick up. And do you think it, it's, it was instilled in you or do you think it's something you picked up along the way somewhere? It wasn't really taught to you. But you kind of picked it. The same like you go to a school system, you know, a lot of things are taught to us, but a lot of things is not directly taught, but we just pick, you know, we just naturally kind of pick up. Like lots of times we like to say, like, and, you know, we like to say, you know, there's some people who, a lot of us struggle with this at some point or another, or some, a lot of us, you know, like to play the system. Right. Makes okay. sense. Uh, one way or another, everybody's guilty of it. You know, and lots of times I'll say, well, it started in high school or it started in a school somewhere because, you know, we've kind of picked up along the way. I go, what do I have to tell my teacher? What do I need to, you know, you know, kind of like brown nosing a little bit. Oh, I, that, that was me. Yeah. I could tell it was yeah. Daniel. I was, I was a very proud. <laughs> yeah, if anybody I mean, but, from school watches this. See, what happens is we learn these behaviors and, you know, no matter if it's taught, we pick it up somehow. You, you, and, you know, we're trying to, in a way, and I kind of being harsh, in a way, like, you know, you know, kind of like, almost like playing the system a little bit. Like in high school, you're trying to figure out, what do I need to tell a teacher to give me extra credit? What do I need to, what do I need to do? Or, you know, and a lot of kids would do this, even say it without them noticing. It's like, well, you know, I know, I know what the teacher wants. Right. You know, I know what I got to say on the test. You know, as long as you give her what she says, I'll get an A or a B. Right. You know, that, that's it. And that's really trying to figure out kind of really what they're doing is really how to play the system. What happens is, it, you know, we keep on going, then how we study, we cram overnight and stuff like that. We're not really learning information. We're just learning. It's, it's, a, it's a different thing of playing the system. You know, I, when I study for a test, you know, I just stay up all night and cram. I just spit it back. I forget it. And I move, move on. on. Right. But then what people do is they, then they take that habit. We formed a habit at that point, but that's what we've been doing for years. We go into the workforce, but it's the same thinking. It's like, how do I play the system? How do I brown nose my boss? How do I cut corners? And then this is where we get the saying in business where, you know, people are just in, are just, um, people are just, uh, they're, they're working just enough. So they don't get fired. You know what I mean? They call phoning in kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. they're not, you know, they're not going above and beyond. 
So, you know, there's this dude, just enough, not to get in trouble, not to get written up, not get fired. They're just putting just enough. So, but what happens is it's, then when people go into their own business and they go on the, you know, success and self-help, that's why nothing works anymore. Okay. Make sense? Yeah. That's a deep, that's a deep secret I just told you right there. When you go into self-help, when you go into personal development, you go into entrepreneurship, you go into building a business, success, you can't play the system anymore. Yeah. You, does that make because, sense? Yeah, I kind of went off and I kind of went off topic a little bit, but once I kind of got on it, I wanted to at least, at least explain what I was well, saying. Well, let's see if we can put the chains together so that folks watching and listening can get it. Right. You but sometimes, like, well, I, you know, he'll spark a thing, and I was like, oh, I want to say that, and I'll say something to him, and he's like, I want to say that. Oh, uh, I don't know if I went too far off to... Well, well let me piece it together and, and, okay. and stop me if, if one of the links doesn't work. Okay. You're, you're young, you're a kid, uh, you have things that are instinctively, instinctively, you're instinctively, instinctively, yeah. instinctively you know what I'm saying. Right. Um, but can I pause that for a second? Okay. I, I think that you brought up a good point, you know... You know, with kids, you know, kids naturally live by instinct. They actually live, you know, they actually live by their intuition. Just like, you know, just like I hate to say it, just like an animal. An animal lives by instinct and intuition. Correct. But at, at some point, and it's not either it's taught to us or it's our environment, but people, we don't live our instinct anymore. We don't live by our intuition anymore. Because we start learning we, the we process. Start, we start learning that. From what we live by our five senses. We okay. live by see, hear, smell, taste, touch. So we have a child that mm -hmm. by instinct does things he's friendly he's giving he's selfish greedy whichever right then he learns habits by family by his surroundings by the culture right uh, religious whatever the state okay so and then he starts <clears throat> socializing in school um and that's a whole other environment because there's a whole new hierarchy and you have to figure out where you fit in right and depending on where you fit in you have to learn what you need to bring to the table mm -hmm. to, su to succeed or to survive just high school or, or school. Right. Okay. Right. And then you go into, you're an adult now, and then you either go to college or you mm -hmm. start working, and that's another set of learned values that you have to, like, figure out. Right. Because now you have a job, and you have to do mm -hmm. a certain amount of hours and a certain amount of work to get paid. Right. So that, exactly. So that you can bring <laughs> that money at home. And then you... Uh, you partner up uh, or get married, whichever, and and now you have to learn a whole new set mm -hmm. because if you've been living alone, now you're living with somebody and you're sharing a space. Mm -hmm. But if you were a greedy kid, the likelihood that you'd be a sharing adult is very <laughs> unlikely. Probably, correct? yeah, probably, yeah. So and that, and that brings us kind of a back circle to the conversation where all the things that you learned as a child will eventually make their way back. No matter what exactly. you've learned along the way, no mm. matter what position you've had along the way in your life, there is going to be a time and a place where everything that was intuitively yours mm. will, will emerge again. Does that make sense? Makes total sense. Yeah. Makes total sense. Because I think, because I think most, like, when we look at <clears throat> the, like, the area of, you know, success... So I brought that up. That's in my mind. Um, then kind of connecting it to what you're saying <clears throat> and we connect it to habits, you know, our ha the habits that we have today, no matter how old you are, most of the time, you know, stems from our childhood. Right. You know, you go all the way back, you know, we've learned it. We picked it up. It was taught to us. If it wasn't taught to us, it was just in our environment. We picked it up our environment because that's what's conditioning us. That's what's, you know, that's what we're, that's what we see. That's what we hear. <clears throat> <clears throat> and everything else. So I think a lot, most of our habits we have, you know, if, you know, if you're 30 years old or, you know, you have 25 year old habits, you know, 26, 27, 30 year old habits, right. because it's all of them are really stemming from how you grew up, your childhood, how you think. And yeah, well, I, I'll confess <clears throat> to this habit and I know this won't be like a like a a, a, a Dr. Phil moment. <laughs> think, uh, yeah, this, is, this, is Dr. this is a Dr. Phil moment. The Dr. Phil. Um, when I was about eight or nine, uh, my sister worked uh, nights, and okay. she would get home about midnight. And 
she get home and she was she was tired. She was ready to go to bed. She take a shower and I Monday through Friday while she worked, I would get up and make her a sandwich. Okay, a ham and cheese sandwich. But I would it, it was a, a piece of it was a piece of art. It was just beautiful <laughs> sandwich. My parents get get mad because they could hear me and they'd be like. Go to bed. And oh, I would, you're up like... I, okay. Yeah, it would be midnight. And my parents were like, go to bed. I'm like, my Nancy's hungry. So if my sister was reading this, she'll understand. Uh, uh, she's, I'd be like, Nancy's hungry, so I'm fixing her a sandwich. Right. And they'd be like, <clears throat> okay, well, then go to bed. I'm like, okay. Uh, she would fall asleep. I knew that if I started brushing her hair while she mm. was laying in bed... She would fall asleep, and then okay. I could eat her sandwich. <laughs> You're like, so I would never make, got to that sandwich. No, she never did. I would make two sandwiches, one for her and one for me. But I knew that if I started brushing her hair while she was mm-hmm. sleeping, while she was watching TV, she'd fall asleep. She'd take like a bite out of her sandwich, and then I would eat the rest. Right. So I'd have two sandwiches a night. Uh-huh. That was, that's why I was a chubby kid. Um, <laughs> 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 a little chubby when I was that age. But those were the beginnings of my deceiving people in some way, and 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 kind of like oh, okay. lying a little bit, mm-hmm. so that I could get my fix at night. And my fix was the sandwiches, mm-hmm. which later in life, uh, people who follow me on my podcast know about this. But for your viewers, uh, I'm a recovering drug uh, and an alcoholic, and that definitely that trait followed me into right. addiction because I would lie to people and I would deceive people and make right. up a little story right. to get what I needed. Not of the most positive example of, uh, but I am clean and sober now, so almost, almost 10 years. But uh, that's my way of saying like, um, things will repeat mm. themselves at some point. Things will come back. So if you, I, I feel like if you want to know the type of adult you are, right, go back and look at yourself as a child, and you will get a good idea of right. who you can become more. Mm-hmm. Now, I, I think that's you know, that's a very good example. I mean, there's a lot we could talk about <laughs> from there, but I think it's it's a it's a great example because it really, really kind of what what kind of spoke to me was you know. Like, you know, there's so much, especially kind of if you're thinking self, self-help self and success and, you know, how-to stuff. And there's so much popularity with the law of attraction and the laws of the universe, the laws of God. But, like, when he, when Daniel was explaining his story and how, like, he kind of, you know, you, you know, in, back in your mind, you're kind of deceiving a little bit. Because you know what you want, but you're kind of pretending right. you know what you're doing. But see, exactly that, you kind of like reap what you sow, where it, it, it flips around to you. But see, what people don't understand with the law of attraction is you can't, you know, law of attraction is really the, the, the laws of the universe, the laws of God. So, you know, you can't fool the law. So whatever, see, we think this is where success, success gets tricky. And th- this is why it doesn't work for most people. Because they do, they, and I mean, I've done it and Daniel's done it. We all have, we all could sit here and have stories and stories and stories and you know, kind of, you know, we, we try to fool people, but deep down we know what we're really doing. And that's exactly that trait right there is exactly what's kind of coming back to us. You know, that's what people don't want to hear. And that's right. the, you know, that's when, you know, the law of attraction is still pretty popular. It was super popular even, a, you know, a few years ago. Right. But, um, what people don't understand with it is that, you know, a lot of people say, well, law of attraction don't work. And it's like, of course it works. It works right now. The issue is you're attracting to yourself exactly what you're doing. Right. You know, if people know it or not. And it's in that example, like really spoke to me with, you know, you, you, you kind of twisted it and you said, you know, I kind of learned that deceive, deceiving state or that deceivingness. And right. it just kind of grew from there. And, and but we all have that. We all have that. No matter, no matter if you, you know, no matter if people make excuses and say, "Well, you know, I was never an alcoholic, or I never did this." I mean, we want to put things on a pedestal. But the issue is, we still do it. Right. No matter how, if it's on a scale from one to ten, it's a ten, or it's a one, it's a zero, or whatever. We still do it, and that's what you know. That's that's why people. It's hard for people to achieve what they want to achieve because we're dealing with a lot of this stuff that really stems. from Again, from our childhood, what we learned from our childhood. But I think also that at some point, I feel really blessed because I discovered that mm-hmm. there was this 
this trade of mine was not going to make me successful. Right. So how do I turn it around to make it a positive? What mm-hmm. do I do? And instead of tricking people into doing bad things. You would trick people. I trick people into doing good things. <laughs> you don't know this, but you're, you're, that. so you're welcome, folks. I'm doing this for you. Um, <laughs> no, I, you start using your words to to show people. Well, for instance, um, another thing that my viewers know and yours don't, uh, I do energy work. I do Reiki. Mm-hmm. I do card readings. And people think, oh, that's just, you know, you're faking people out. You're lying to people. But I, I truly believe in that kind of work. Mm-hmm. So I've learned to, and I have to use the word convince, I've learned to convince people that what I'm doing is not in order to trick them or to take anything from them. Right. It's, it's in order to help them mm-hmm. uh, in some way. So what LA would call a, a spiritual life coach, which right. is what I do. Like I will, right. I will spiritually help you turn your life around mm-hmm. and, and it's worked. So uh, turning the negative into a positive, basically, right. and anybody, anybody can do that. Anybody mm-hmm. can do that. Um, there's a, a word that you threw out, and I've, I'm I'm very attracted to it lately. Success. Okay. Did I say that? Yes. Not just your okay. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> let me record. Let me, let me look right, the recording. Right. Um, people talk about success all the time. We mm. we, we talk about being successful. Um, are you successful? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it determines what you think success <coughs> is. Me. A lot of times, you know, we kind of misconstrue the word success. We kind of, you know, we think, and I think what most people struggle with is that we think that, you know, when you look at success, you look at wealth, especially the word wealth. And I kind of use both words interchangeably a little bit. Is you know, The question is, are you doing what you really want to do? Hmm. You know, are you, are you living a lifestyle you really want to live? Has nothing to do with money. Money's in there, of course. Money's a piece of the pie. But, but what we have to understand about money really quickly, money has to be attracted to us. Everything starts from within. Okay. So, and you don't, you don't really only attract money into your life when you're really doing what you want to do. Are you really, uh, uh is, is your job, for example, are you really passionate about it? Is that what you really want? Makes sense. And, you know, success, you know, success is really being happy in all areas of our life. Like, if we take the word wealth, I mean, it's not just about the money. You know, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's having healthy relationships. I mean, you know, and it's having health, you know, nutrition and, you know, exercise, that's in there too. The financials are in there too. But, you know, you, we have to, we have to kind of live a, a well-rounded life to, to, in order to really be successful. So that's really what, even today, that's why I'm learning too. Because, you know, if, even if I'm in this industry, if Daniel's been in the industry for a long time, even if, you know, we might be at a higher level, but we're still growing too. And we're, st- we're still, you know, getting better and better and better. And really how you get better is you really, you, you learn more about yourself. You're more honest with yourself. And that, that's, you know, that's really where it stems from is, is knowing really what you want to do and, and working with your intuition and working with, you know, kind of going back almost as a kid again, because I think as an adult, I think, you know, when we reached adulthood, we got out of college, college and we lived, right. lived on our own for a little while. And, and then, then maybe you're married or you have a girlfriend, boyfriend, and you know, now, now all of a sudden you got responsibility. And this is where it's hard for people to grasp a little bit because, you know, because now it's kind of like, well, Chad, you don't understand, you know, I don't like my job. I hate my job, but I need my job because I need to pay the bills. I need to support my family. So when, when sometimes when, when, when people hear that, you know, I'm saying, well, you know, do what you want, you know, be passionate about it. We have to slowly go that way. I mean, sometimes we can't just, you know, jump ship, right. you know, because we've got certain priorities we have to do. We have to, you know, handle our priorities first. But you, you need to slowly go that way, slowly. For whatever reason, you know, adults, most adults, <clears throat> when you come, especially we've been talking a lot about kids here. Right. You know, comparing kids to adults. I mean, what, what really, you know, when you look at kids, what are they really doing? Kids, they only do what they enjoy. Right. They only do what they like. They don't want to do. You know, we've been taught in school. You know, this is how I was. When I went to, when I went to school, you know, I was really good in math. I was really good in science. I was really good in health. 
but that's what I was into. But you know, when I, I'm pounding, I've got the mic. Here. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. But anyway, you know, I. But you know, the teachers taught you. Well, Chad, you know, you're already good in math. You're already good in science. You don't need any help in that area. Then focus all your attention on English. Focus all your attention on this. But we've been taught growing up, you know, constantly focus on our weaknesses. Constantly focus on our weaknesses, weaknesses, weaknesses. But we never build up our strengths. Then when we get out of school, we end up getting a job. We don't, you know, it's just a job. And and this is kind of how I grew up a little bit. I was kind of grow, growing up. I kind of grew up both ways where my parents were always, you know, do what you want to do. And right. they, they, they uplifted me on that side. But on the flip side of it, you know... It, what you saw was kind of opposite that you know, there was you no know, stereotypical middle class family you know a job was a job a job was something that you didn't love you didn't enjoy you worked to support your family that was it right so you know even for me as as a habit you know i i deep down i still have that philosophy where well, you're not supposed to love what you do you're not supposed to be passionate about it and I'm giving you a hell of a long No, answer. well, uh, actually, uh, let, me, uh, let me just pause you because there's something that... We, did I say something that he probably like, has a point here? Yeah, there's something that we both agree on because, right. again, talking about the kind of work that I do, when people come to me and they're like, I'm, I'm miserable, I'm not happy, mm -hmm. work isn't good, and we'll do a, a reading or we'll do a Reiki session, and I'm like, well, it's time to change your job. It's time to change what you're doing with your life. Mm -hmm. And they'll give me the same response. Oh, I need to pay bills, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, but just changing your job will make it easier. You'll enjoy right. what you're doing. You'll do better. Mm -hmm. You'll get promoted. Maybe you'll start your own business. It'll it'll take you in a direction that you don't, you have no idea what right. the universe has planned for you. Right. But if you stay miserable in where you are, there's only so much that the universe can give you. Yeah, because the universe is going to respond to kind of what we give. I mean, if you give nothing, well, you get back nothing. Like, right. You know, I mean, we kind of want something for nothing. You know, we kind of, you know, we, we, we want the lifestyle. We, want, we don't want to give up anything for it. Right. Does that make sense? Right. We, yes. we, we, that we, we, we yeah. want the riches, but we don't get, we don't want to give anything up for it. We want, we want the million dollar income, but we don't want to give anything up for it. So, you know, the, the universe is always going to respond to what you give. The more you give, the more you receive. And that, that's this universal law. The more, the more you sow, the more you reap. Remember, folks, even Kim Kardashian had to give something <laughs> for a million dollars. Just, just keep that in mind. I know, right? <laughs> um, well, I had another thought, but it kind of it kind of lost me. Yeah. I know I will probably pick up yeah. here, like once Daniel starts talking. Um, keeping in the success conversation, mm. do you think folks miss out on the big successes because they don't celebrate the small ones? Oh, that's a good question. I would want to. I would want to say deep down, kind of what I, what I know now today, what I experience now today. I would say yes. Because I think we need to, we need to celebrate life. If you're not, because it comes back down to, even when I think about myself, I'm going to give myself for an example. I'm a hard worker. Yeah. Makes sense. I, yeah. You know, I, you know, that comes back from my martial arts, being a professional athlete. I, I'm a hard worker. I can sit there. I can go to a coffee shop. But like yesterday, I went to a coffee shop. That's why I wasn't. I, I called you last night. Oh, okay. And I was coming home, driving home. But I went to a coffee shop for five hours to do edit video. And I'm just sitting there for five hours editing a video. And, you know, I was working before that. I mean, before the five hours. So, you know, I was working on stuff at home. I was tired of being at home. I went went to a coffee shop. And, like, one, it was a Korean bakery. So, if you're in L.A., you know, go to 85 Degrees. <laughs> um, it's, it's a Korean bakery and, uh, that's like sea salt coffee there and stuff like that. And here's a health guy and I'm promoting every bakery. <laughs> but anyway, I should get, I should get a commission from them yeah, to call them up. Uh, uh, call them up. Hey, I'm promoting you all over the place. But, um, uh, I lost my track. Um, what was I saying? Working for five hours. Oh yeah. Cause I'm, you know, I'm a very hard worker. Makes sense. But one of the things I find, I find out with myself is, I kind of have a habit of I don't really celebrate small successes, right? Because you know what, what you know if I you know if I, if I write a new book and publish a new book, it's like boom, yeah. Then I'll just move on to you know, that one. I don't really celebrate. I don't really you know really you know you always you always move into that big one. We always thinking well, 
And this is why we all want to say we're always thinking, well, when I do this big thing, that's when I'll do it. When I, when I have this money, that's when I'll do it. When I have the million dollar income, that's when I'll start giving. That's when I start helping people. And the, the issue is, it doesn't work. And if it did work, you know, the results would show in your life. Right. You know, you know, we have to celebrate. We, it has to come back to we have to be living with, with passion and doing what we want, enjoying what we want. And even if I can sit there and work for hours, I enjoy what I do. But, you know, I mean, celebrating that and, and, and live in a now or, you know, yeah. you know, kind of what like, you know, like Jack Canfield says, you know, act as if we have to, to the one way you can kind of fool, you can't fool universal law, but one way you can fool your mind and subconscious mind, you have to act as if you have to do it now. I mean, you, you already have to act as, if, act as if you live that lifestyle, you have that income. You, you know, when we talk about giving and receiving, you have to give. I mean, I heard Anthony Robbins say this, and you know, he said, you know, people, <clears throat> people always have the mentality of what we're talking about. He said, well, you know, when I have this, that's when I do it. You know, when I have a big house, that's when I invite people over. When I have a big house, that's when I'll do parties. You know, but do parties now, right? You know, invite people over now. Start creating relationships now. You know, people think, well. I'll start giving money or I'll start tithing when I when I have the million dollar income. Well, I heard Anthony Robbins. That's why I, I got it from Anthony Robbins. Said that. So, well, let me tell you, you know, if I'm giving ten percent of my income and I make a million dollars, you know, it's still hell of a hard to write a hundred thousand dollar check, right? Because that's ten percent of my income versus if my income was fifty thousand a year and I write a five thousand dollar check, or you know, my my income was you know, a thousand a week and I wrote a hundred dollars versus my, if my income was 20,000 a week and I'm writing a $2,000 check. So, you know, people, people don't, people don't get it. People always live. Well, if I do this, when I do this, no, do it now. Right. And I think that's, I, you know, I think, you know, that's, yeah. Cause, um, going back to my experience of the last couple of years with my health issues, mm -hmm. uh, again, my listeners know yours don't, um, right. well, we kind uh, of do a both two, two, yeah. so it's like, um, I went through, uh, cancer, uh, during 2015 and then some surgeries to 2016 and had some near death experiences with my health. Mm -hmm. Um, that, uh, Christian, my boyfriend and I, we got into that mentality is like, what are we waiting for? Mm -hmm. You like I almost died, and he had to convince me. He's like you almost died, and if we don't do these things now, you're. And if, if this happens again, you're never going to do it. Mm -hmm. You're going to go, and and it's never going to happen. Um, his parents, who are older now, never got to travel. Everything they wanted to do, they kept waiting mm -hmm. until right. until. And, and, I, and I have that habit too. Like sometimes it, it, it still ingrains. I'm sorry, I no, 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 that's fine. But you know, I'll, I'll remind you. Keep it in the back of your thought. <laughs> But, you know, I have that same habit too, you know, and it, it comes from childhood again. We're always, you know, we, we go back, how long did I have this habit? And I think back, it's always the childhood yeah. where it's like, you know, we always think we want to do it, but for some reason we've learned as a kid, we picked up as a kid, we picked up in school, wherever it came from, we've learned that, oh no, we don't, I don't want this, or, you know, you talk yourself out of it, or if, you know, if I, if, you know, if I have an intuition to go somewhere or do something, we talk ourselves out of it. But see, we don't know if we really followed our intuition. We don't know what, where it would really take us. Right. Makes sense. You know, like, for example, like, you know, if you, if you want your dream car, this uh, intuition would work. You know, I'm not saying it would work overnight, but it's just a, like an example. Like if you, whatever car you want, you know, you have it in your mind, maybe you have a car, your dream car, something like that. But, you know, uh, you, know you might wake up one day and you have a, an intuition, a gut feeling, a, just a thought. And I might think, and this is an example, um, I might think, well, you know, today I'm on a, you know, I think about Daniel and I think, oh, I think Daniel is craving some chocolate chip cookies. So I'm going to make him some chocolate chip cookies. I haven't had breakfast yet, so yeah, I am and, craving. You know, I, you know, I have the time to do it, but I think, eh, I think, eh, no, you know, I don't have the time. I'll do something else. You know, I'll, I'll focus my time. Oh, you know, I need to be working on my business, not making Daniel chocolate chip cookies. You know, it makes sense. So I talk myself out of it. But, you know, if we could really see, like spiritually see what could have happened, 
after I brought Daniel chocolate chip cookies, if I just followed my impulse, followed my intuition. Because what I didn't know was if I would have made Daniel chocolate chip cookies, brought them to Daniel, maybe the day I brought them to Daniel, he would have had a friend over that was selling a car that I really wanted. And the sense he knew Daniel, he would sell it to me for a very cheap price, give me an yeah. awesome deal. See, that's really, you know, that's really how intuition works, but we don't follow it. We, we talk ourselves out of it, you know, and I, I, I'm dealing with this right now. Like I had an intuition thought to, you know, like I've been struggling for a couple months to go to the Philippines for a month and, you know, work there and do some stuff so I can really focus my time. I'm not so scatterbrained and, but I keep on talking myself out of it. I keep on, you we'll know. We'll talk about that after. Yeah, we're talking about yeah, yeah. afterwards. But it's the same thing. We need to follow our intuition because we don't know where it would take us. We don't know. We don't know. And that's something, you know, as a kid, you know, our imagination, our intuition, it's it's just been, it's, it's gone. We have we have to listen to it. And that's how that's how it gets stronger and stronger. The more we listen to it, and Daniel will do this as far as, you know, reading energy and stuff like that, the more... You listen to your intuition. The more you obey it, the more you follow through, the stronger it gets. And it gets easier for you. Cool. That, I think that's a good stopping point. But for my show, mm -hmm. uh, there's a tradition in my show that we uh, send some words of wisdom, uh, some thoughtful okay. ideas to the listeners. Mm -hmm. So based on everything that we've talked about, um, what could you tell people to do on, on how to change that mindset and, and celebrate life and, and follow their instinct? <clears throat> That's a good question. And I, I try not to give a loaded answer. Okay. Um, it's like loaded potatoes here. I know. It's like a loaded. We, we talked about so much. And I, I think... I, I think we really... Sometimes just sitting down and just meditating, being quiet, and really going after what we love doing what you want to do i think that's really the first step cool is that like you know it, it seems so basic i mean success is really basic but things are so basic we don't do it and i like to tell you guys uh if, if it, it sounds cliche and it's you're gonna say oh my god really but there comes a point in your life where you just celebrate waking up in the morning you celebrate having time with your friends you celebrate mm -hmm. Uh, doing projects together, uh, right. and and I have a really full schedule today. And every step of the way today, I will celebrate um, that I made it there. Especially if you live in LA and you make it to traffic, that's a success in well, itself. Right, right, right. Like that's it's, so. Right, right. Uh, it's almost like the law of gratitude, and you know, be thankful. Yeah, you know, be thankful for everything you have. And we we tend to forget. We we forget that there is. Um, Success in everyday life. So don't wait for the big things. Enjoy the small things. Well, there you go, guys. Uh, thank you for listening. Uh, again, thanks, uh, Kevin Moyers, for all your help. Everybody, go check us out on uh, abnormalentertainment.com for all the shows. Uh, follow the links. Check out some of the really cool podcasts that we have on the air. You can follow me on uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, uh, look for a little Mexican, L-I-L-M-E-S-I-C-A-N. Uh, you can get in contact with me there. You can also, if you want to be on the show and you have something to talk about, uh, send me a direct message to my email at, uh, it's Daniel G. Garza, D-A-N-I-E-L-G-G-A-R-Z-A at hotmail.com. Yes, I still have hotmail. So send me a special email, uh, subject line, uh, podcast interview. D-A-N-I-E-L-G-G-A-R-Z-A. -E Thank you, guys. I'm back on the air. I'm uh, trying to get more interviews for you guys. So please uh, get in touch. Uh, I'll be back next week with a new podcast. Uh, until then, this is Daniel Garza saying, hey, put it together. I ain't no angel. I still got a few more dances with the devil. I 
pinned a lot of demons to the ground. Got a few old habits left, but there's still one or two I might need you to help me get. Standing in the rain so long, it's left me with a little rust. But put some faith in me, and someday you'll see. Subscribe to Put It Together on iTunes, Stitcher, and at abnormalentertainment.com slash put it together. Find Put It Together on Facebook and tweet Daniel at Lil Mesican, L-I-L-M-E-S-I-C-A-N. And for more podcasts, comics, books, movies, and more, head to abnormalentertainment.com. You've been listening to the Abnormal Entertainment Network.